In this extra video, I will show you how we can increase the size of a corridor that we generate so that it takes at least two spaces instead of one, since it was a very common question that you have asked in the comments section. Let me use a sprite to explain what we are going to be doing. So our corridors are represented by a single tile, and some of you wanted to make the corridors larger. So what we are going to do is we are going to take the first tile of our corridor and the next one, and we are going to check what direction they are moving. They are moving in the up direction. So what we can do, the simplest solution to add one more uh, tile to the width of the corridor is to add a tile to the right of this um, direction. So we are going to basically rotate the direction by 90 and we are going to add one cell to the right and we are going to do this across all the tiles that are moving upwards. Now the next part is the corner, we are going to leave it at the end, but then we have this situation where we are going to the right, so we would add a cell to the left, so we would add here the cells, and this way we have a wider corridor. Now what the problem might be with this approach is if we have the corridor that goes to the right and then upwards, we can add the cells to the uh, on the down direction, the down direction and then to the right, and we might end up with a one cell that is left alone, which is a corner tile. So what we could do is we could use a brush of three by three to complete this by adding this kind of brush. Now, if we are good with having three by three corridor, there is a much easier way because we can just simply take a brush, paint over the corridor a three by three brush, and this would create us a much wider corridor. Okay, so this is the theory. Let me show you how we can code it. Okay, so in our project, we should probably have already this corridor first dungeon generator and the corridor first dungeon generator script. So let's open it up. And here in this script, we are calling this corridor first generation and we are calling this create corridors. Now in our implementation it does not return anything, but we are going to want it to return a list of lists of a vector to inch and those will be the corridors. So we can type it already, and when you are done, let's just right click on this create corridors method and go to the definition here. So this method has calculated the corridors using the random walk corridors, and it has returned the corridor. So what I did here was added this list of lists of vector to int corridors. I have misspelled it, so let me fix it, corridors. And we are going to set it to be a new list of lists. And whenever we return a corridor from our procedure generation algorithms class, we are going to add this to our list. And next we are going to add return value to the create corridors method. And when we are done creating all the corridors, we are going to return those corridors list of lists. Now we need to do this because we want to have all the tiles representing the corridors so that we can make uh, the corridors bigger. So. At the top, in our corridor first generation, we are going to return this list of lists corridors. And next, we are going to use it in a for loop. I'm going to uncomment this. We are going to loop for int i equals zero, i less than corridors count. And we are going to call corridors with the index i. And we are going to create increased corridor size by one method and also increased corridor brush three by three method. So this method will take in one of the corridors list. So since this is a list of lists, an index will return us a list of a vector to int. This is a representation of a single corridor. So you can right click quick actions and generate this method. And when you have it, you can right click on this and go to the definition if you are using Visual Studio 2022. So this is the uh, definition public list of vector to int. This is the return value. Uh, and we are going to take as an argument a list of vector to int a single corridor. We are going to create a list representing a new corridor. Now I'm using a list, but we could use also a hash set, but maybe we want to use this list and know which tile comes after the next one. And we are going to create a vector to int preview, uh, previous direction. Again, I have misspelled it, previous direction equals vector to int zero. So this will help us to find the corners. Now we are going to loop for i equals one because we want to start checking the tiles by checking the direction from the first tile towards the second. So we need to take the second tile in our list and take the first one and find the direction. Uh, so this uh, will loop for 
i equals one till corridors dot count and we are going to set vector to in the direction from cell equals corridor i so this is the second tile for example minus i minus one so this is the first tile on our list this will give us the direction when we have it, we can compare. We are going to just uh, check a previous direction is different than zero and the direction from cell, so what we have calculated, is different than the previous direction. This will mean that we have a corner and this is just a brush three by three. We are going to have two loops for X from minus one till two and from Y from minus one till two. And this will add a new corridor, add a corridor with the I minus one plus the new vector two, and this is the offset. So this is the, the tiles around this cell representing our corridor. And we now set the previous direction equals the direction from the cell. So this is how we save the new direction so that if we have a next corner, we can find it. So this is the same what we are going to use in a brush three by three method. But the interesting part is here in the L statement when we want to just add a single cell. So what we need to do is calculate a new corridor tile offset. So the uh, cell in the direction of the direction of the corridor plus 90 degrees. Basically, we want to rotate the direction to find the nearby cell, as I have explained uh, when showing the theory. So this will use this get direction 90 from, and we are going to pass the direction from cell value, which we have calculated at the top. And this method will simply check if the direction is vector to up, we are going to return the vector right. If the, it is a vector to the right, so it is to the right, we are going to return the direction down, down, left, left, up. And if we have passed something illegal, we are going to return a vector to zero, just in case. I hope this makes sense. Now, when we have this direction, we can go back to our code. And what we are going to do is add the original tile as well as the original tile plus the offset calculated based on our direction. So basically, if the direction is up, we are going to add the original tile plus the tile on the right from this original tile. And this is how we are going to enlarge our corridor by one, by single tile. And we are going to return this new corridor list and we are going to then use it in our calculations. So at the top in our corridor first generation, we are doing this in a separate for statement because here we have the find all dead ends method that finds all the cells that have only one neighbor. If we did it in this original create corridors method, then we would have this find all dead ends stop working. That's why we have returned this list of lists of corridors. Next, we are going to lose for loop. And at the end, we are going to just add the uh, floor positions union with floor positions is a hash set so we can add those and remove any duplicate values to our floor positions so that it can be processed by our uh, tile map visualizer. Now uh, the, there is another method uh, increased corridor brush three by three but what I just want to mention before we test it is that this method will put duplicate values in this list. So you need to be wary about it if you want to use this return value of this increased corridor size by one uh, for some other calculations. Okay, and if I now press generate, we can see that now the corners, uh, the corridors are much bigger and we can see that those uh, dungeons can have this uh, problem where there is only a small passage of one, uh, of width of one cell. So basically maybe we can use a larger brush for the corners. Okay, let's go back to our script. And we have one more method, and this is instead of calling corridors i equals increase corridor size by one, I'm going to use this second method, which is corridors i equals increase corridors brush three by three. So this is just using a brush of uh, a square brush of three by three pixels, and we are going to add the offset. So again, you can right click, quick actions, and generate this. Right click on this, go to the definition, and here is a much simpler method. What it will do is will uh, basically create a new corridors list just as before. It will return a new list of vector to int and take in a list of vector to int corridor. And it will just loop for i for each tile from one till the count. It will loop for x equals minus one till two and from y equals minus one till two and add this uh, tile position representing the corridor 
plus all the offsets, so all the tiles around it, so additional 8 tiles will be added to our list. This will be done for each tile representing our corridor, and we are going to return this new list. If we save this now and go back to Unity, okay, so let me again press Generate Dungeon, and as you can see now our corridors are represented by 3x3 three by three tiles, and we can generate more of those dungeons, and every one of those should have a larger corridor connecting those rooms. And of course you can play around with those parameters, but I'm quite sure that this is the, the way to go when you want to increase the size of those corridors. See you in the next video.